are here in Palermo and we're going to Rome. Start the day properly. That's it. I asked on Instagram what are the hidden treasures in Rome because I've seen Rome quite sometimes but only the very touristic, very known spots and today I'm going to find the least known spots. Do you see it yet? <laughs> There's the Colosseum. I'm here almost falling over these branches because it has been raining in the night. It's a bit wet. I promised to show you hidden gems and this one for sure is hidden. Santo Stefano Rotondo. It's a round church, I'm really curious, let's check it out! I'm the first one to arrive to the church, so it's completely silent. There is some scaffolding, but look at all the frescoes. I'm walking here in Villa Celimontana. Really beautiful. I'm really doing like some sort of park route. I've been walking already for two hours in this lovely city and I've seen more green than traffic. And that for sure in a big city like this is impressive. I almost don't want to speak in this video because I'm so impressed by how I only hear the birds and no traffic, no cars, no people. I'm just here in the nature in Rome. Amazing. The only thing that I have to start thinking about is how I get out of this park because I've never been here and <laughs> I'm following a crisscross kind of road and no clue where to go. to make my way out of the park and we're now with a lot of traffic at Circus Massimus. All I got to do is cross all the traffic, it's green, so I'm going to run. I managed to cross the all the traffic and I'm now walking again in some green part. Here is the Circo Massimo. This place was used for um, the horse races. The ancient Romans, they used this place for entertainment because they did horse races here and it still has the shape. It's actually really big. That's probably why it has its name because Circus Maximus is Latin for the biggest circus. We're here in the Giardino dei Aranci. Actually, um, it's quite an uphill walk towards this park. So you can feel, you can hear me being a little bit out of breath and maybe a bit sweaty as well. But it's so worth it. I'm going to show the view right now. Of course, what we all came for is that one there. The most fun thing of this park is that the farther you go away from the Basilica San Peter, the bigger it seems. So this is how small the St. Peter looks from the panorama towers. 
and here we are at the entrance of the park. To me it really looks like it became bigger and bigger the farther I go away from it. Aren't you curious what all these people are looking at? In this big door there is a really small keyhole and if you look through the keyhole you can see the St. Peter's from really close and it's so beautiful it's really aligned and it's well I would say another hidden gem. Bocca della Verita. The story goes that if you put your hand in the mouth, basically the mouth will close if you've been a bad person or if you've been lying. Let's also take a moment to appreciate this Arco di Giano with a rhino in front. Here we have the Santa Omobono Sanctuary. Here we got what I believe is part of an aquedotto. Here's the Colosseo again. Wrong. This is the Teatro Marcello. And there you see the Temple of Apollo Sociano at the Bellona. It's interesting that while the Colosseo gets all the shine, there is quite a similar one, not even that far away. So I've already seen quite some hills, quite some stairs. But anyway, I'm going to go up these stairs because I want to see the Marco Aurelio statue. Here we are, the Altare della Patria, the Fatherland altar. It's really, really beautiful, but um, compared to all the Roman buildings, I think this is my least favorite just because it's way newer. My sightseeing trip today again all by foot I'm going to show you all and uh, I hope you enjoy it cool because uh, just after I arrived the fountain started flowing because apparently in the night uh, there is no water movement and everybody was allowed closer to the fountain so it was a really really beautiful moment my advice for Rome is be careful where you sit down on very touristic places if you sit down on a terrace they can ask you a lot of money for a coffee or for your food so be careful with that. I almost had to pay 6 euro 50 for an orange juice. Um, thankfully I found out early enough so uh, instead I took it at the bar because if you take it at the bar, Al Banco, they will ask you much less. But the moment you sit down on one of their tables they can ask you anything they want. So be careful with that. The next place better be good because it's a little bit out of direction of all the other things that I wanted to see. But I've seen really good pictures and I hope I can take slightly similar pictures. Here is where I want to go, but there's a fence. Let's see if I can. Perfect, it's open. So I just opened the fence. I don't know if it's allowed, but it didn't say it was not allowed and it's really worth it.
So whilst they are calling it Piccola Londra, small London, it actually reminds me a little bit more of New York with all the little stairs towards the doors, um, but then more colorful. I'm now walking to the Villa Borghese. Um, Villa Borghese is uh, a really big city park and there is supposed to be a little lake with some sort of temple. Really can't wait to check it out. It's um, about 20 minutes walking from now. Right now it's 10 minutes past 11 so I've already been walking for 2 hours and 10 minutes. Um, so far so good. I'm really happy to walk here especially with this beautiful weather and uh, a lot of green. I now arrived to Villa Borghese, it's really a big park and now I'm going to look for the little lake. So this is the little lake that I was looking for. It's really cute. Yeah, I'm definitely more a nature person than a city person. I really love architecture, but come on. This is a thousand times better. And thankfully it's still in the city center. Here we have Galleria Borghese in the Villa Borghese Park. And um, here they store some of my favorite sculptures. From Bernini. I'm now on Piazza Buenos Aires and I'm about to arrive to the Copa de district. Um, the Copa de district has really interesting architecture. It's a mix between Art Nouveau, Medieval, Baroque and Ancient Greek. I'm so curious this is definitely another hidden treasure. Copeda district. It was really nice. Um, I've seen some people taking pictures, but it was only local people, which is usually for me a good sign. Um, it's a quarter past 12 now. I'm um, 15 minutes away from the Termini district and there finishes my tour. I would really like to thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to watch my other videos um, about Rome and about other city trips that I've done. And I'll see you soon.